All right, welcome into the channel. This is Parame Trades, Parame's Trade Journal. It's my personal uh, speculating journal here. I've done an online version, and so we're going to welcome you to uh, analysis of the Euro FX using Commitment of Traders report, some pivots, and some price action. Let's see if we can have aligned ourselves with the proper side of the trade here. Let's see, proper, but mm, profitable, <clears throat> profitable side of the trade. So we were looking at the Euro FX just recently, and we were, I, I was really wondering. So we didn't change the numbers. We I didn't ratify the numbers from three weeks ago. Uh, so we'll get another report tomorrow. Well, we said, whoa, uh, you know, a not so optimistic outlook by commercial interest a quick shift into uh, extremely positive territory up over 100 set a new high in the context on the uh, of the six month index and also on the uh the three-year index too so on the three-year index handsomely positive territory for about five weeks and then they dropped off and you know, so we're looking at the chart and we're saying hmm this looks like a bullish case here. Is the is the bullish trend kind of strong? And then they jumped off a cliff. Jumped off a cliff and set new lows repeatedly for the last three weeks. So this had, this had piqued our interest. So if you know we look at our five week prior on on the Euro FX, we'll see if I can find it. We saw this shift in sentiment. He said, whoa, hey, what's going on here? We've, we've got to take a look at this and see what's going on. So, you know, we do. And we've been following the Eurofax right along. So uh, we took the opportunities or you know that presented themselves to align ourselves with the proper side of the trade. And you know this is what we get. So this report is, um, this report that I generate each week comes from the Commitment of Traders report you know, with particular interest to commercial interest and their open interest to see if we can find something to work with and see where the, where the sentiment lies. So we had just finished a video on, let's get rid of this here, on crude. And, you know, much to the, I would say dismay of, you know, other analysts, who are attempting to discredit this methodology, I would say, well, show us something, right? So we, we use this methodology. We use this as a leading indicator to see if we can align ourselves with, with, with big money here. And so we're looking at the COT report. This is the six-month index and the three-year index. I've got this, the same data loaded up on the Thinkorswim platform. That would have kept us, you know, a prize to the price movements of the euro effects. So we've also got to pay attention, obviously, to what the dollar is doing as well. Well, let's just go through this chart. On the daily, uh, this is your value low. And I'll just call this our value high area. In this methodology, this practice, this approach, or, or, or strategy isn't, isn't anything new. So uh, credit where credit is due. Um, we've read Lorenzo Demir's Price Action Breakdown book, and it's, it, it's an amazing book. It's an amazing book. I, I recommend it for anybody who's starting out trading, especially with the, within the futures market. So what could we have recognized with commercial interest that would have piqued our interest as to the direction of the sentiment of the euro effects. I don't like to do this. I like to uh, use my snip and sketch tool here to help illustrate what's happening in the market. Or on this chart. So, six month index breaking down relatively low, really low almost in uh, 
you know this extreme negative outlook territory which is you know the 20 percent mark based off the index that we use so you know not looking great here not holding the very positive outlook on the six month index uh, low the lowest has been in the last six months you know if, if our data cut off here this was the lowest that we had and within this area did we see some price action that would have supported a negative outlook and I think the answer is yes so comms you know with with price as low as it is with price action retracing as low as it is in this in this one year context they say this looks a little bit more appetizing so they start to shift their sentiment in the direction so right about here is where we break into extreme territory uh, so blue line is your your, your three-year index so we're up in positive territory and then the six month gets a nice gets a nice pump so we've got a new high here so did they get a head start on this one might ask before we you know we break into extreme territory of, of positive outlook and I, I think so so they're not holding that short here they're starting to increase their net long positions and their net uh, net long interest so we we do get some price movement to the upside so was was this a pretty good indicator that you know price was going to move was going to move the upside oh i think so that's a pretty good cue that you know something was happening here so what we do like to see is comms getting extremely positive on the six month index and or the, the, the three year index if we can get it up, you know, depending on the data. The WPR in the over uh, sold territory, hanging out down here. Comms are getting bullish. Open interest doesn't help us here. It, it, it really, it, it doesn't. Um, you know, in, in bearish territory, yes. We like to see open interest high. Comms getting bearish and, you know, kind of overbought territory. So these things almost align perfectly together. We, we, we like to see, or we think that commercial interest likes to see, you know, an overbought, overbought territory. Does market sentiment help us? I, I think so. Whenever market sentiment is this high, we think, we think short. When it's just this low, we think rally. It was relatively low here, and we got some price action to the upside. Looks like we're in the uh, oversold territory, so that that helps us out a little bit. And comms are bullish in on the three-year index, up over 80%. So, I mean, are you wrong here? No. Not in extreme territory on the three-year index. We don't have data back here, but I mean, they were rolling really bullish back in this uh, back in this area back in May. And does market sentiment help us out? And I mean, not as much. Oversold territory, that does help. So then, just recently, <clears throat> so that three-week decline that we were looking at on a bullish chart definitely would have aligned us uh, on the right side of the trade here. So we break into extreme territory. Uh, below the 20% mark, and that's a nice hike. I mean, how can you think otherwise that this is going to continue to the upside? But if we aligned ourselves with commercials, I mean, they had a pretty good indicator that this was probably going to move down, and it moved down dramatically. So we did get an additional uh, uh, correction or rebound, and I think a lot had to do with what the dollar was doing as well. But as price moved up, comms still held uh, a bearish outlook on this. They were not very up. Um, they were not very optimistic on this. But it didn't did it matter much. So still continuing to hold um, a negative outlook on the euro. It, can this continue even further down? Because they're not optimistic whatsoever on on the euro. Were they wrong? I mean, did they take a uh, a 
pretty big hit here by holding a negative outlook and not, you know, not closing some contracts out. The rear index looks still, you know, just below the 50 line. But we saw those three weeks and we said, well, why are comps still holding, still holding bearish? Why were they not, they're still not, op, uh, you know, optimistic about continuation with the Euro FX? I think Euro FX has been in a, a long-term downtrend for some time. And it doesn't look good. It doesn't, it, it doesn't bode well on uh, the larger time frame, on the daily time frame. And it didn't look like it boded too well for this short-term correction. I mean, they got, it was a pretty good move. And what I'd like to see is a higher low established here to get ourselves a nice swing pivot. <clears throat> and we'll see if this changes direction and it continues. And we'll look at some lower time frame stuff to um, to analyze this. Boy, so here's here's our outlook, right? this look like you know a bottoming pivot I would say I would say it did higher low lower low higher low and nice you know kind of technical test if you will in this area so we were able to establish that we had you know a nice channel to work with when uh, we pivot off the low and we get a nice higher low pivot and a higher high. We come up and challenge and we almost get like double top action going on in here. At this higher you know end of the range. Well, we were breaking back down into that. Oh, so you know, what do we have at least from a, a channel perspective that would have said, you know, this is this is changing direction. How can we get into this into this trade? Mm, and first and foremost is just kind of try to find uh, a point of control to work with that is valid. Oh, we got a nice one. Oh, we got the one hour period, so that helps out. I do like to do these on the one hour and then take a look at the 15 minute time frame or, or even establish these channels on a 15 minute time frame just so we can get a better look. This downtrend was was really heavy, right? And it's happened pretty quick. But we have a, a valid point of control to work with to say, all right, you know, sentiment is shifting, uh, direction might shift in this. And that was a short-lived um, <clears throat> correction to the upside. But let's just take a look at what would have kept us in the right side of the trade in the euro facts here. So we're going to have our, our zero coefficient uh, working right here. And we've got this nice pivot to work with uh, to finally establish a, a 1.0 coefficient. And so now we just take a look and say, well, is our point of control valid? Is this, you know, is this a healthy point of control? Mm, I would say so. I would say so. so how do we know that the... You know, the market's going to shift a little bit. So beyond the the the, the one point uh, zero coefficient and into the one point two five is a really healthy area if you're if you're a bull. If you're going to take a bounce, if you're going to look for a scalp play, and then we we get this nice indication that this might potentially be a bottom here with this kind of inverse head and shoulder look and then a retest nice technical retest here so struggle below the point of control value and then we start to breach it we start to breach a point of control and we start to trade higher so at first the downtrend didn't look as strong in this area because we're trading in the higher half of it from the the zero coefficient so it didn't it didn't look too too strong here but once we started to break down and we get this aggressive move at the zero coefficient 
pushing down below the point of control. Now we're getting a lot of excessive trading that's happening, I think, down at the lower the lower end. And when we get so we finally find some support over with the with the help of this pivot. Finally find some support on the other side of the point of control. And you know, we're breaking out of this this value range down here this box where a good majority of the trading is, is happening it's starting to look a little bit more like accumulation so what other um, helpful indications would we have that this is this is going to start to trade higher and that we've got a valid channel to work with I think you really watch the top of this value area first for a break we've got some nice direction so this would have this would have gotten you in the trade I think these higher lows would have gotten you in the trade the consistency of these higher lows and, and, and the shift in sentiment so we're up over so we've got this value area here too right and we're, we're starting to trade up over the mid-range of this that may indicate that this thing, this thing's you know bottoming out and this might correct a little bit so if you didn't get in the trade here on a, on a technical test and a higher low you know the first of, of four higher lows that were produced we finally get some break in the uh, the zero coefficient and we find some support and now could we have a developed an early point of control here with these three pivots early and only you know only having this amount of data to work with and would have just been you know one two which one two three here Just the, this little bit of data indicated or got us at least started in thinking about being on the right side of the trade. So is this, you know, is this a valid point of control? Is this a valid median line to work with? We can monitor it as price action, you know, continues to the upside. Is this a is this a valid point of control? And it would it would seem that way. So in the very beginning, we're 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 kind of oscillating between the you know the top and bottom of this range. But once we start to find some solid support on here, we get a nice bounce. Would you would you chase it higher? Would you chase it higher into a 1.25 coefficient? I don't think so. And we do find some, uh, some some trading in this range before it breaks down, and then this you know again looks appetizing for for bulls to step in if if you miss the you know you miss the pump or you're a little late to the party. In this, you know, red circle area, this danger zone up around the 1.25 to be a buyer up in here. And more so, we probably could have uh, recognized that this is starting to break down when so we get a little bit of rejection here, and quite a bit of rejection, and then not finding our way back over the point of control. Uh, and then testing the 1.0 coefficient and finding rejection on there, this, this this is now starting to turn into an opportunity for a short sell. And, and if you weren't in it up here, you know, with a, with a stop below the you know the highs <clears throat> at the 1.25, if you missed if you missed that opportunity, here's your first uh, lower low on the chart, and then your first lower high. I mean, and this should have been a pretty good indication too. So we, do, we start breaking down the negative uh, 0.25 uh, coefficient, and, it, and this is absolute. This just chart looks like it's breaking down. So we find this early point of control to to work with, and it looks pretty valid. And we start it here, and we say, okay. Uh, rejection on the point of control. Rejection on the um, 1.0. Uh, and there's continued rejection in this area. Most of the trading is happening on the lower half of this point of control. 
with the exception of <clears throat> this break higher and there's just no response by the bulls once when we break this but there is a, a very handsome response from from the bears in this area so once we break down the value low area we find rejection there additional confirmation that this is this is going lower we, we break this um, this uh, lower high here as well rejection another opportunity to get into the trade if you haven't or add to your position with, with relatively strong rejection from the bottom of this range so we're just we're tapering off here the tapering off it's 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 now looking like a pretty darn strong downtrend can't find support at this price level where there was um, a, a tremendous amount of uh, market memory happening or, or trading as we and as we broke out of this uh, high value range or value high range a little bit of trading here but not a strong response by bulls so valid point of control I, we've got that working for us we can get rid of that I'm going to just get rid of this uh, clutter on the chart so that we can identify if this thing is going to change directions how will we know uh, we've got to follow it down. So we are uh, a fair amount of trading happening on the lower end of the range. This is a really strong downtrend, and and then lo and behold, you know we're we're working down here. But this is really strong, and the only way to really tell that this is going to change directions is to get some kind of accumulating pattern that looks like you know this might turn sideways, and we start trading on the other half of this. So your effects not looking good. Strong downtrend. Um, you know, probably better buying opportunities at the lower half of this channel than there would be <laughs> on the upper half. So where's this thing? You know, where's this thing going to go? I think most importantly, we're probably going to have to pay attention. Bear Comms are so bearish on the Euro FX. Um, new data coming out tomorrow, so we'll have a better look at that. But uh, we really have to follow what the dollar is doing. So I hope this chart has everything on here from the previous analysis. Nope. Nope, I think, uh, <laughs> I think we deleted them all, which is not cool. And I don't know why, because we had a pretty good analysis going on here. So we were looking at, uh, you know, the uptrend of the dollar and, uh, it, you know, getting in on this trade and, you know, where were we getting some excessive trading that looked a lot like distribution. And, it, you know, we found this top and it, it was time to get out of this trade. So if we, we follow the dollar and follow the do what the dollar is doing, it probably give us a pretty good indication as to what's going on with, uh, with the euro effects. And we, we're just blazing up here. So, again, you know, uh, we've got a point of control to work with. It looks pretty valid. Just using these first three uh, key pivots to establish the channel. And then, you know, we've got this, you know, selling off a little bit here. Not so optimistic. But we, same thing over and over again when trying to find kind of a bottom to a move or to a correction is... Uh, a higher low with a lower low and a higher low established this looked like a nice swing can it maintain it though so now we've got we've got some price pivots to work with our first two on our zero coefficient and then our 1.0 so I mean <clears throat> at the beginning of this channel it looks like we're trading in the lower half of it but now up on this point of control the time to be a buyer up in here I, I would say you know probably not. If, if, if this thing's going to continue, if this thing's going to continue. So how would we have known that this was going to um, establish itself and correct correct itself? So first two pivots for the zero, get out of here, uh, for the zero coefficient. That's, you know, let's work with this here. Hey, 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 hey. You know, I think suddenly my data just decided to load itself up. 
<laughs> there it is. So we're just we're replicating information that we've already got here. Which is yeah, that's good news. <laughs> that's good news. Uh, oh, they just line up nicely. They line up nicely. So, uh, so I guess this is a downtrend channel that we were working with, and then we looked at this excess, uh, you know, trading that was happening here. Found this nice swing pivot, and then we find support and and validate our point of control. And then here's here's the break on the 1.25 and support on the 1.25 and and now we've kind of broken this this downtrend look how, how high can it go mm, I just don't know I think my uh, my internet connection is going batty here uh, so how you know how high can this go and what effect will it have on uh, on the euro? Uh, I guess we got to look for a breakdown in the dollar. But it, as long as the dollar continues to the upside here, it, it doesn't bode well for the euro effects. So this looking like a relatively strong uptrend on on the uh, on the U.S. dollar. So uh, this will obviously probably have an impact on the euro effects, and it will um, probably continue to not look that wonderful with a strong downtrend but we have to look for some kind of excessiveness if you want to be a, you know a buyer in this area but i as it stands now any opportunity to you know, get in on a short sell or something like that um with regard to this is you know any kind of an opportunity up in this direction if, if we do get a bounce i would say i would stick short for the meantime until the chart tells us something or at least gives us something. Um, and we know we took a look at commercial interest, and that does not look uh, extremely healthy at this point, at least from their perspective. But could we get uh, on the daily time frame uh, a, a bottoming pattern, a swing low pattern? We're going to have to see a higher low. We cannot we cannot take out. We take out this low down here, and uh, it, it's just not a valid pivot, um, a valid you know swing pivot or you know, long-term low for the euro effects. So I'm pay attention to your fundamentals and what's coming out of, uh, you know, the EU, but... And watch the dollar. So that's what I'm going to say about the euro effects. Hopefully you got into this trade, you know, much, much sooner, much earlier, and, and you're hanging out. And you, and you saw this breakdown here. And, and you saw this as a, a good area to get into the short sell. Thanks for stopping into the channel. Uh, Discord server is listed in the description. Discord is a chat community that we use to just post our charts, um, talk about the trades, talk about commercial interest. Uh, not a financial advisor, and um, you know, so don't take this as financial advice. This is just you know my speculating online market speculating journal. So if you want to uh, join the chat, uh, we've got you know the community working on Discord. Servers listed there. Download the app, plug in the server address, and come and say hello. Until the next video, I hope you find yourself on the profitable side of the trade.